Good morning. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc. and Alternative Parties Books Publisher sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Today, friends, we have another exciting guest on our podcast. She, her, her name is Christina Cosbeal, and she is running for office, and she's with the Green Party. So welcome to the podcast, Christina. Thank you for having me. We're glad to have you. If we could get started by you telling us, I told them that you're with the Green Party and you're running for office, if you could tell us what office specifically you're running for. I'm running for United States Senate against the incumbent, um, who's a Democratic candidate and who's facing his second federal uh, charge right now. Oh, my. Then what state are you in? I am in New Jersey. Okay. So if we could start by... You've given us an introduction to yourself, a brief biographical sketch. Okay. Um, so I'm a first-generation Egyptian, and I grew up in foster care in the state. So I traveled from house to house. Sometimes I was in youth shelters, and sometimes I was, you know, a homeless youth. And I was able to – and during my time, I knew that education was key to freedom. So I, I worked very hard in school. And – um I just I I had uh, an amazing opportunity to finally go to to college and I took I never thought that I'd actually ever set foot on a college campus and uh I went and I got my master's degree but oh, wow. when I was yeah I know I the entire thing I, I it it's such a blessing because um you know I was I grew up with such uh amazing people around me and other really 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 intelligent people and I just you know I always wonder why why did I get very lucky with with certain opportunities and why didn't um my my other friends get lucky with certain opportunities and last hmm. week somebody um that was very close to me and uh he actually uh he passed away and it was uh, he's at peace now because he was really suffering but like we both were exposed to the system and you know, the system uh, forgot him and neglected him, and somehow I was able to make it out. So it's just like when, when the people you grew up with, they pass away, and, you know, it's it's hard because you, you when we're all young and we're all, like, kids, we have this, this wonderful dream that we're all going to, like, hang out, and we're all going to, like, uh, you know, grow old together, and we're all going to be friends for life, and and travel and stuff, but the current policies prevent that because you have to work two jobs to survive, and they force people to to isolate and not interact. And human beings are very social creatures, so we have we have to interact. But like nobody can afford to go to the movies because we we all live paycheck to paycheck, and no one can afford their medication. No one could afford um, medical treatment. So it's just like it's it, it, it's really like who gets who draws the shortest stick at this point. Like who, uh, the way the policies are set up, if you just, a lot of people are just unlucky. So I, I was able to be blessed. And I, and when I, after working front lines at the hospital and COVID and seeing how our current policy makers and our current administration did not care about people in COVID, only cared about money, it, it really showed me how detached they were from the world. And I really said, you know, if I ever had the opportunity to run for office, I'm going to go for it. Because I I, ha, I finally was able to get to this place where where I felt safe and I felt secured, and I'd like to give that back to everyone in this country and in this world. So that's why I picked the United States Senate seat, not only because of who I'm going against, but it's also this is a message for hope and an inspiration and just to tell people like I'm here for you, and you could put all your fears, your concerns, and your worries onto me, and you I won't let anyone fall. And no one has to die anymore. We don't have to have this suffering, and we don't have to have a world full of pain. So this is to to uplift other people, and the goal is to actually win. This isn't, you know, uh, a protest vote. This isn't, you know, an ego thing. Like, I'm working two jobs while I'm doing this. It's exhausting 24-7, and I'm – it's – but I'm, I'm, and I already knew what was going, what I'd have to give up and what I'd have to do to like push through. I'm uh, just, it's, I, and I, cause I knew that I was going to do this in like 2018. 
it's just, and I'm not going to back out. I'm not going to to give up because the goal is to actually help people. And I and saw and I've already been exposed to to a lot of suffering and pain, not just with myself, but with the people that I've worked with. And I'm tired of seeing families cry, and I'm tired of seeing you know kids cry and their parents cry, and you know just communities hurting because a lot of these solutions are very common sense. Sure. So so, so it sounds like your because of you got you got advantages that you got you don't want to keep those to yourself you want to use whatever you have to benefit others 1000% and i i don't know why i i was given this opportunity on and to have this platform and i i'm going to use it 1000% to help people there's absolutely no way and this is coming from somebody who was exhausted and who lost hope during covid because a lot of people were were dying, and you know, I was fighting uh, staff uh, administration um, management within the hospital because of how they were managing the policy so uh, so very poorly. And I and I just I was like I can't help people anymore. And I actually thought about leaving the field and just doing something low key and just saying, you know what, like it is what it is, and accept it. But I said, you know what, I, I'm a fighter. I've always had to be a fighter growing up, and I've had to fight for everything. I'm just like, I can't just, like, throw in the towel. So I'm like, I'm going to fight for the entire world. Let me just throw it all out on the table. So, you know, I have a lot. Like, I, I don't have family to fall on, and I've already been threatened multiple times. But I'm like, F it. Like, this isn't the first time I've been threatened and this isn't going to be the last time. Like, I'm going to, to help everyone, and I'm going to, to fight because, you know, it is what it is. I've, like, you, you can knock me down, but I'll get right back up, and I've always done that. Sure. Sometimes when we interview candidates, they're open about talking about their opponents, and sometimes they don't want to. So you mentioned you had an, an, an opponent who was, who was being indicted, right? Oh yeah, Menendez. But you know what? The the Democrats are really setting it up to have Menendez get reelected, which is kind of, you know, sick. Because what? Now I'm going against five Democrats against Menendez, and the goal is for them to take signatures away from me. So that's going to be interesting. So we have a plan to to sort of like tackle that. Um, so yeah, no, they're very. Um, very uh, sick that I'm going against a very sick war machine. Oh no! Yeah. So what? So what is your platform for this race as a senator? You represent your whole state. So what is? What do you? What would you like to do in office when you get elected as senator? Um, we're going to be implementing universal health care. Okay. And, and we're going to be ending the failed war on drugs. I'm going to be ending mass incarceration. I'm going to reduce and eliminate recidivism. I'm going to help improve mental health care. I'm going to reduce, and the goal is to eliminate, you know, suicide um, because we've had 60,000 people in the last year commit suicide. And it's not just people died. It's that pain gets transferred uh, to the family members. And yeah. I'm going to be giving hope to other people. I'm also going to be implementing better international policy so the world doesn't hate us. The world actually uh, will start supporting and trusting us. I'm going to be regaining trust in, in uh, politics, at least with me, because I'm not going to lie. I'm going to stand on my, my own two feet. And even if I wind up standing alone on policies in office, um, I'm going to follow through for the voters on everything. I even signed a contract so I don't take any corporate donations. Okay. And if I do take corporate donations, then I have to resign oh immediately my. or get or or um. But I'm being serious about this. I'm getting money out of politics because look what's happening. Nobody can speak up, you know, for what's going on in the world because of of money, and nobody wants to come up with re resolutions. And the military industrial complex is just making bank at this moment. Sure. So since you deal with foreign policy as a senator, would you care to share some of your foreign policy ideas? Removing the sanctions from Venezuela and Cuba would be the first thing. Um, oh, first thing, and, okay. Yeah, and implementing and working on peace in the Middle East 
which is going to be a giant, giant hurdle to state for Palestine and Israel and actually giving Palestine their own infrastructure. But it's not even just tackling that because we've made so many enemies. It's how do we pull out but also make sure that we stay on the same page that we can we can draw a truce and we can get other countries to to not be upset with us and that also includes Venezuela and Cuba because we've done a lot of damage overseas internationally. Um, uh, one of the things that I want to implement is giving resources like, and this is where free universal um, education comes in because I'd like to send I'd like to send. Um, Doctors overseas, teachers overseas, help um, with ethical green infrastructure overseas. And I think that would be a way to say, like, you know, taking responsibility, because that's what leaders do. We're supposed to take responsibilities when things go wrong and uh-huh. saying, like, you know, we're sorry, we're moving forward, we're moving in the right place, and then just making sure that we all end. And that would be conversations with people, but also keeping the public, and instead of keeping secrets from the public, letting them know this is what hap- what's going on, and listening to the voters, you know, listening to their two cents too, and, and following through and having conversations with the voters saying, you know, we're moving this way. Redesigning immigration is another thing. So instead of putting families in ICE, prison detention centers, and, you know, ripping families apart and having kids go vanishing and, have taking the responsibility of that and finding those missing kids and missing people um and really you know pushing for real change and real solution okay oh yeah and climate i don't know if i mentioned climate but that's no you, you haven't mentioned that so how, how do you feel about climate change so the mili- uh, the military industrial complex is the world's biggest climate a disaster because oh. that's we're throwing bombs and chemicals and you know it impacts the climate um sure. and there's a lot Makes of research sense. backing it up and i've i've spoken with some a lot of experts that are, are climate you know experts that that have given me the education and it's just removing because uh war should be the last thing and i don't want to say like i'm against war and i'm a pacifist like if we you always have to defend yourself at the end of the day but you have to be able to have the ability of having a conversation first and then you know moving forward whatever happens after happens after because i'm not going to put the american citizens lives in jeopardy ever sure um but it's uh, so that would be the first thing Moving forward with an ethical Green New Deal, because as I'm learning that um, that with the so the Green New Deal was developed by the Green Party, the Democrats took that Green New Deal, but then they added the fossil fuel um, industrial complex with that, um, removing the fossil fuel and keeping it ethically green, where we're not digging into the planet and we're actually focusing on renewable resources um, and really pushing that forward. And okay. what I also want, yeah, and then another thing I want to do is keeping, uh, really in, in involving and in building up farmers within this country, which uh, uh, a lot of people don't realize is um, corporations are taking over. It's more we're importing foods full of chemicals, and there's a war on, on um, the small farmers currently going on. And uh, it's really giving them their platform so they can remain independent and we're not going completely corporate and keeping food grown within the country. And what I want to implement countrywide within urban communities is like little tiny farms within the within the communities that are community ran and that are green and that people are growing and people are able to shop and get access to clean and fresh new food. Well, yeah, fresh food there too. Okay. Sounds good. So you gave us a overview of your platform what is your campaign strategy how do you plan to reach the voters in your state of new jersey it's going to be through virtual and in-person um town hall canvassing okay. phone banking um and just uh, meeting with different organizations and through the media well independent media i've been blackballed from the main media you have been Oh yeah, because I'm a third party and I have actual real solution, real solutions, and uh, they support Menendez. <laughs> okay. So media like us, alternative media, 
you're getting your word out in that way. Yeah. You guys are oh. the biggest heroes. You guys don't even realize it. Awesome. That's what we love to hear. Thank you. That's kind of you. <laughs> so, so do you, it, you were talking about you have some, sounds like you have a team. How, what support are you getting because you're not doing this by yourself, right? Oh, no. I, I couldn't do this by myself. <laughs> yeah, it would be a big race to run by yourself. Yeah, it would be very hard. So you, um, so yeah, so what what's your team like and what how are they helping you out? My team is I have to say I'm just blown away. Um my team is full of energy. Everybody's so hungry and focused. Um, we all have, like, different ideas, and we all um, are able to have conversations. The biggest thing that I – and I like to emphasize this um, because I understand when it comes to politics and political teams is a lot of people have horror stories, especially running in, in campaigns. As I emphasize, like, my campaign is very safe for all volunteers and people that pop on, and um, you are allowed to have ideas. We are allowed to have conversations, and I have a very open mind. So we're always challenging each other, and, and we, we have an ability to, like, work with each other and hold each other accountable. Um, so it's today um, I'm not able to meet with the team, but I do have, you know, my campaign manager, my team, they have what they're discussing already to start implementing for next week while okay. I'm not there. So it's just having, we have such a, a trustworthy and strong team and we're always in communication on the same page. Okay. So how about ballot access? What was it like getting on the ballot in New Jersey? How many singers did you, did you have to sign and how did that all go? Well, I can't sign anything until the first week of January. Oh, okay, um, so it's not I done yet. Yeah, it hasn't even begun yet. I <laughs> Yeah. So I just need about 1,000 or 1,100 signatures. Okay. But the goal is to get more than that because we're also expecting, I already know that Menendez and the courts, were, I'm going to wind up in the courts, they're going to challenge the signatures. Okay. Which so is, you're you know, yeah. yeah. So uh, there, oh, wait, I'll get on the ballot. Like, there are people that support me and people who have already volunteered to help collect signatures. So I'm just waiting um, until January 1st happens. But, yeah, no, they're, uh, even afterwards they're going to challenge me. So we already have a team to go into court ready to oh be challenged because they challenge everyone and challenges in incumbents. So, oh, that, that's the way New Jersey works? Oh, yeah, New Jersey is so corrupt. So that's yeah, a whole I, conversation. <laughs> yeah, I think I remember we interviewed Madeline Hoffman. I think it was two years ago now, and she was talking about that, I believe. So, yeah, it sounds like you got your hands full there with that stuff. Yeah. Oh, Madeline's part of the campaign team too, so she's. Oh wow. Yeah. Interesting. She's, uh, yeah, she's giving me her endorsement, and she's supporting me and helping me with better international policy. She's writing the policies with me. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. So, yeah, she has experience, so that's perfect for you to have someone like that. you got a good team, it sounds like. Yeah. It's a very good team. Um, and I am trying to get John Stewart, too, on my team. So. <laughs> John Stewart? The comedian. Interesting. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I'm, yeah. We're, it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> sure. So you the because some there are some races in November of this year, but yours is in 2024, right? Yep. Okay, so it's election day with most of the other races in 2024, right? November. Um, most some are actually next week. Um, so that'd be more of the local races, like the school board, um, okay. uh, city council. Um, yeah, so that would be more, those would be the elections next week, and I'm helping other Greens. Okay, so in addition to your week. campaign, you're helping other campaigns. Oh, yeah. I'm, I have no problem supporting other candidates. I'm canvassing for them. Um, I'm sharing their stuff. I, I hate, knock on, do yeah, I 
speak on their behalf. Like uh, the goal is to help get to get end the corruption and get the right people in. And the only way to make the change is to stand as a united front. Okay, sounds good. So, Christina, how can our audience support you in your campaign? Honestly, um, through sharing, retweeting, um, sharing on Instagram, and um, encouraging other independent medias to to um, to reach out, and then also like if people can, just donating five or ten dollars here or there, um, because okay. the little bit goes a long way. Like we're not, I will, I'm not. I'm not taking corporate donations, no PAC or APAC, like no, no corporate donations at all. It's literally the voters and the people that want to see the change funding it. Okay, so it's a bunch of small donations from everyday people like you and I, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay, that sounds like the way to do it. It's a good thing yeah, you're not. Cause I, yeah, I won't be bought out. Awesome. You'll have your soul intact. Yes, because I like to sleep peacefully at night. Yes, that's very important. So, Christina, we wish you all the best in your upcoming campaign. We trust it will go well for you, and it sounds like you're putting in a lot of effort, so it sounds like it's going to be a good campaign. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to see what next year brings. All right. We wish you all the best with your campaign and also everything else in your personal and professional life. Thank you. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day and weekend. All right. Sure thing. Take care and all the best. You too. Bye.